Welcome! Thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to show you how I made this nameplate. First I'll show you the supplies I used, then we'll begin. Thanks for joining. Alright, to begin I'm going to show you what I'm, supplies I'm using. The first thing I'll show you is my copper. This is just a rectangular piece of copper I cut to fit my wooden backer here. And uh, this copper, you can see there's some color on it. All I did was I used a butane torch like this. Uh, that's really easy to use. And I just heat it up. It doesn't take very long or else it'll, uh, if it overheats the copper, it'll turn it black. So besides my copper, I also printed off a paper template that I'm going to be embossing into the copper. And I also have a piece of double-sided adhesive here. And by the way, I will do my best to have the links for all of this down in the description below for anybody who's looking for these type of supplies. I also have a few paper clips. This will be for attaching my template onto the copper while I'm tracing it. I have a piece of wood here. This uh, was, I reclaimed this out of a pallet. Uh, it's not pine something else but it has a nice look to it and so it's a square piece and I just cut it in half down on the bandsaw so that I have a triangular shaped piece that'll sit like this. Also I have, let me go up to my tools here, I have a stylus. It just uh, has two different little balls on the end and then I have another tool here that um, this is a little embossing tool. It has like a Teflon tip on this end that's a little wider than the balls and it doesn't pull so much across the metal. And then on this end, it's just like a little decorative end for doing like a little border. I also have here, I have my upholstery hammer and I believe that's what it's called. It's got just a small little flat face on it. And I have some upholstery nails or tacks, uh, like these are called. These come in all sorts of styles. Again, I'll have links down below for these. So these are the supplies I'm starting with, and let's begin. The first step is to trace the outline of your template onto your copper. Uh, as you'll notice, each side has a different coloration, so you'll decide which side you want towards the front of the piece. And in this case, I like the colorations of this. It has some big broad bands of color. So the front of it needs to go face down. Then I'm going to take my template and I'm going to lay it upside down on this so that I'm tracing it from the back so the embossing is going forward. If I was to lay it on the front like this, it would be boss embossing down into the metal. So you'll want to look and note, make sure that it's centered and then you can just paper clip it on the corners of your template and uh, about four paper clips is enough to hold it in place so that it doesn't move around while you're tracing out your outlines. And you can get, you can do pretty complex shapes with this template, um, template way of doing it. And you can just trace the outlines and then add in, fill in details later. So here's what I've got so far. Uh, from my end, I can see the lettering through there. Maybe a little difficult for you all to see, but it's there. And then there's my front side. And if you'll notice here, my paper clips, I didn't push all the way on because the little corners of the paper clips have a tendency to mar up the copper. So I didn't want to do that. So my template is centered. So now just using the stylus, I'm going to come along and trace the letters. And it takes somewhat of a steady hand to do this. That way you don't, um, that way you don't have wiggly letters. But if you make a mistake, it's not at the point yet where it can't be fixed. This, as you'll see when I flip this over, this just leaves a very faint outline of the letters that you're tracing. And even further here, if I wanted to have really straight lines, what I would have done is just got out a little ruler and I could have used that for helping me draw my lines, but I'm okay freehanding this. 
doesn't have to be perfect. So before, so flipping it over and looking at it here, before I take off the template, I always look and make sure I got everything on there that needs to be, sometimes you miss a line or two, but that turned out pretty decent for freehanding. So now when you've got the outline done, you can remove the paper clips and the template and set them aside. You won't need them any further. And you're just going to continue by adding details to your copper. So, uh, you know, that's a decent look, but I would like my lettering to be deeper. So what I'm going to use is uh, my little Teflon tipped tool here. And I'm going to trace again my wording. Now, you can see this pretty clearly at this point. Uh, so it shouldn't be any difficulty tracing over it. Depending on what effect you're going for, if you're using a bulky font, instead of just tracing down the center of it, you can trace the outline of the letter. So for each letter it would have uh, the two sides in the top and the bottom, kind of almost like bubble letters, but more of a font, blocky font type. I've done those before. But since this is a smaller project, just doing simple lines for the font is sufficient enough. Again, this part takes a little bit of a steady hand. You get used to it. You try to work where you can keep your lighting and you can see well. So now you'll see there that I've got that traced in deeper. And from the front side, it's definitely more noticeable, the wording there. So when I've traced it from the back, what's happened is some of the material around it's kind of puffed out a little bit. So I'm going to use my Teflon tip tool again, and I'm going to refine the lettering just by tracing around either side of the letter. And that just gives more definition to each letter and makes it a bit more visible. Now, in some cases, a smaller point may be handy for this, especially if you're working in tight quarters. Some of these letters are a little, a little close to each other to fit this tool in comfortably, but We'll just we'll make it work. Now, right now I'm working with, uh, this is copper sheet. It's foil. Um, it's like a really thick foil called an embossing foil. And it's much thicker than aluminum foil that you have in your kitchen. But if you work with copper raw that you haven't colored, you have to be careful to you may want to wear gloves when handling it, just so you don't leave fingerprints all over it. Uh, or you can always clean it afterwards with a copper copper cleaner. But I like adding coloring or a texture to the background even, and that covers up any blemishes that, that may happen during the process of making, making your project. So actually, right there I made a little mistake, I'm going to show you how I'm going to fix it. So right here, on the center, let's see, I'm trying to get it where you can see here. Right here in the center of this E, I accidentally smushed my line flat because I traced too close to it. I actually just traced on top of it. So to fix it, all I have to do is go back on my film and just draw a new line. And then I can trace around it again to define it. And that fixed it up. So metal's pretty f forgiving like that. Uh, you get to, after working with it a little bit, you get to know what its limits are. So I've got the name done. And at this juncture, uh, if I wanted to, I could add a decorative background here. With the rainbow colors, I don't want to do anything that uh, detracts from that. So what I am going to do, I have a little piece of sandpaper here and just holding it on the wood uh, with the tip and then holding the sandpaper on the tip of my finger here. I'm just going to lightly sand the letters. I want to give them a little bit of contrast. 
This will change the color of the letters from the, that of the background. And that kind of gives it a little bit of a smudgy effect too if the, the sandpaper overruns onto the copper around it. But you don't have to go too heavily with this. Again, the uh, idea here is just to remove a little bit of the top layer of oxidization from the torch, the coloring that came out when I used the torch. So hopefully this will be, be able to see this clearly here. But this stuff isn't necessary. It's just, just optional. So if you can see that there, it's highlighted the lettering even a little more. So at this point, you're just on to ornamentation, uh, any, any little bit of ornamenting you want to do. Um, I'm going to use my little rolling tool here to give this kind of a decorative border around the edge. And so you can either do this from the front side or the back side. So if I do it from the front, it'll indent down, or I can flip this over and do it from the back and it'll, and it'll raise a little bit. So I think I'm going to do it from the back. And I could be using a ruler for, for this part but I'm just gonna freehand it again. I don't like overthinking it. So, and you could even go for a wavy look if you wanted to with this. Uh, you could kind of wobble it side to side as you're going down it and give it a wavy look. And I'm doing this on the foam because that allows it to have a deeper impression than what it would on the wood. So, all right, there we have that part. You can see I got a little uneven here at the bottom, but that's all right. Uh, now, one thing I do want to do is I'm just going to use a wooden dowel rod, just a thin little wooden round up, uh, dowel rod, and just laying this on the wood or my or table or it could be a piece of glass or anything that's hard. I'm just going to lightly press with this on both sides and that just kind of, yeah, that flattens it out nicely. So there we have it. The copper is done now. So the next step will be attaching this to my wooden plaque. Now this wood, uh, this is, I put a little bit of a finish on this, just a Rust-Oleum clear spray that's uh, multi-purpose for wood or metal. And I sprayed that on all sides except for this very bottom side. So this is what the wood looked like raw before it was coated. And then the coating gave it a little bit of a more uh, rich yellow color. So just so you can see what this is going to look like here, it's going to end up going on like this. So you'll have a little wooden border and it'll be able to sit on a desk. So to, in order to attach this, I need to get out my double-sided adhesive, which I have right here, which I cut just a little in from each of the edges, uh, just so it's easier to line it up. If it was the exact same size, it can be, it can be tricky to get it on there without one side um, going off and having excess sticky on one side. So, so you want to have this where you have good lighting, and you can see to make sure you're getting it lined up. So I peeled off the one side of the sticky and the back side's on there. And then you just rub it thoroughly. Uh, if you have any areas that are really high areas of embossing, you'll probably need a filler to go behind it. But uh, for most s smaller lines and things like that, you won't need any sort of filler or backer on it. Now you want to rub this on good, that way it's stuck to it and then you can just take the corner and peel it off. This can be kind of tricky even with short fingernails. I have a hard time getting it loose sometimes but because it is very, this 3M stuff is very sticky, uh, it does an excellent job. To pull it. If it seems to stick where your crease is, where it's coming up, you can just rub it a little bit and it'll come loose. Just needs a little, little extra care there. So there we go. We got the double sided sticky on there. You probably can't even see it. It's just kind of a, like a clear gloss. So now make sure I have 
This is the direction I want it. And center it here. And so I laid down the one side first. Um, that way, if I have any creases, I can work it out this direction. And that helps. And if you get, if you don't get it set down exactly center, um, if you haven't pressed the whole piece down, you can normally pull it up a little bit and uh, it won't be any issue to re realign it. If most of it gets pressed down though, you may, it may bend your piece when you go to pull it loose. So since my borders are up a little bit, I give those extra care to press that down. So there we go. Go. This part's firmly attached. So if you wanted to, you could leave it at this stage. Uh, what I'm going to do further is I'm going to add my upholstery tacks here. And I'm going to put those in the corner of each side of this little sign here. So each corner is going to have a little tack. And um, that just, you know, it's for decoration. It also helps hold the copper, you know, uh, extra, extra good. So I'm just going to freehand this. And... Press. Now this is a hardwood, so I like to press it in just a little bit to get it started, and then I can hammer it. So let me get that done, and I'll show you how it looks. All right, we are having a rapid design change. Uh, I went to drive in my nails, or my little upholstery tacks in the corners, and because this is a hardwood, they started bending. There's kind of a weak point there where the uh, nail shank in the head uh, is weak. So since I had this, plus this is a, since it's a odd shaped piece, I wasn't able to lay it flat and really hammer on it. So what I've decided to do now that I have two holes in the corners here is I'm going to replace that. Instead of doing the upholstery nails here, I'm going to do some little flowers. So I'll show this to you next. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I've got some little flower cutouts that I just cut out of aluminum that's copper colored on one side. And I'm just gonna give these a little bit of texture and interest before I add them onto the sign. So I'm just gonna go out and kind of radiate some little veins from the center of each of these little flowers. And then I'll probably put some dots in the middle for uh, to kind of represent the stamen and such. So there's the texture I wanted to add. And then I could just go in a little circular motion using my tool here. And then it turns out like that. So I'm going to do that with two of these. And then I will be attaching it to the corners of my sign. And I can cover up the holes there where I was trying to put in the upholstery nails, which normally is not an issue for me, but most of the time I'm working with pine too, so I'm sure that makes, makes a lot of difference. So there you have it. All right. These I'm going to Gorilla Glue on like that. And if it's a little bit curved here, I can flatten it out with a dowel rod. So it'll be like that. So here's how it turned out. I used a little bit of Gorilla Glue to attach the flowers there, and uh, that's how it looks. If I knew I was going to have the issue with the upholstery tacks, I probably would have just stuck with the border because I think that was a nice effect. But I think this will work, and I think that'll make a nice little desk sign. So. Thank you for watching. Uh, check down in the description if you want to see more embossing videos like this. And also I will have the links and such to some of the supplies down there for you if you're interested in trying metal embossing for yourself. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day.